welcome to Bio World. Today we are going to discuss one of the most vital system in our body. Can you guess which is the system? Who has a control over all the other system? Yes, that's good. It's our nervous system. In the previous years, we have covered almost all the systems in our body. Am I right? Digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, excretory system and so on. So today we are going to discuss and learn the one of the most important system which have a control and coordinate all the systems in our body that is our nervous system. So moving to our first chapter sensation and responses. So dear children let's move to our first chapter sensation and responses. So let's see the chapter at a glance. In this chapter we are going to discuss the following points. The importance of nervous system, the various components of nervous system, the neuron structure and physiology, the various disorders related to nervous system and finally how to take care of the nervous system. So come on children let's learn the chapter. In the lower classes we have discussed that the living thing possess certain characteristics. Do you remember? Yes, living things can grow, they can reproduce, they respond to a particular stimulus. So before going deep into the chapter, just guess familiarize with certain terms. Stimulus. In the plural way, we can call it as stimuli. So let's try to learn what is stimuli. Wow, that's the stimuli. Who is the stimuli here? Yes, it is the ball which comes towards me. And how I respond to the situation? By moving to the side. So every stimulus the body will respond. To every stimulus the body will respond. So what do you mean by stimuli? The senses that evoke response in an organism are called stimuli. Let's see the classification of stimuli based on its property. First of all, the external stimulus. External. From the term itself, you can guess the meaning. It is from outside, that is from the environment. So if the stimulus is from outside the body of an organism, we can term it as external stimuli. So let's see what is an internal stimuli. Yes, that is within the body or from the body inside the body. So stimulus can be broadly classified into two external stimuli and internal stimuli. External from outside and internal from within the body or inside the body. Let's see some examples for both. So let's see some examples of external stimuli. When I touch this candle, when I move my hand towards the flame, oh, it's hot. The burning sensation, isn't it? The hotness is the stimuli. And what is the response here? I withdrew my hand. Let's see another example. When we touch an ice cube, the similar thing, what will happen? We withdrew our hand. What is the stimulus there? Cold. So in the same way, the hot, the cold, all these are examples of external stimuli, which is we experience from the outside of our body. Now let's say some examples of internal stimuli. Don't you have the feeling of hunger and thirst? When it comes, yes, 
Of course, when our body needs water, we feel the thought of thirst. So, in the same way, if body get tired and deficient of glucose, we feel the hunger. So, hunger, thirst, pain in, from inside our body, various microbial infections, all these are examples of internal stimuli. So children, stimulus can be classified into two, external as well as internal. External means outside the body and internal means inside the body. Those stimulus which are present outside the body are called external stimulus and within the body or from the body or inside the body is known as internal stimulus. Is it clear? Now let's see a picture here. Let's observe the picture. Children and other organisms have a variety of experiences. What are they? Yes, a child tasting a mango, a snail withdrawing its body into the shell when it is touched, a girl is washing her face, a butterfly is sucking the nectar from a flower. Two children are beating the drum in order to fly away the birds. So all these are certain instances depicted in the picture. So here when we observe each activity, we can find a stimuli and a response. First of all, tasting a mango. When we taste a mango, before eating, when we look into the mango, we can see the beauty of the flesh or the color with the help of our eyes. And according to that, we will judge the taste of the mango. When we cut it into slices or when we eat the mango, we feel the taste. So the sweetness of the mango will cause more salivation or the taste itself cause more salivation. The next one when the girl is washing her face with water, the girl feels some sort of refreshment. Another instance when the boy touches the snail, suddenly it withdraws. So touch is the stimulus and withdrawing to the shell is the response. When the children are trying to beat the drum, by hearing the sound, the birds try to fly away. So here the sound is the stimulus and the flying of the bird is the response. The color of the flower is attracted by the butterfly or maybe sometimes the pregnancy too. So there the stimulus is either the smell of the flower or the fragments of the flower or the bright color of the flower which will they get attracted and they suck the juice that means the nectar. So in all activity we can find a stimulus as well as a response. So how our body receive the stimuli? Is there any special cell or mechanism? Yes, there are specialized cells in our body who can receive a particular stimulus. So they are called receptors. So specialized cells in the sense organs or in any other part of the body who can receive the stimulus is called receptor. So what do you mean by receptor? Specialized cells in the sense organs and other parts of the body to receive stimuli are known as receptor. So what may be the function of receptor? They receive stimuli and generate suitable impulses. They receive stimuli and generate suitable impulses. What do you mean by impulse? Impulse is simply the message. The message is formed as a result of receiving these stimuli. So once our body or the receptor receive the stimuli, 
it is known as impulse these impulses are passed from one destination to other with the help of specialized cell so let's see the nervous system who play the crucial role in control and coordination of all the activity by generating various types of impulses so human nervous system human nervous system is composed of brain spinal cord and nerves the major components of human nervous system are brain spinal cord and nerves so children what do you have learned today yes the definition for stimulus the two types of stimuli external as well as internal the various examples of stimuli the role of receptors yes finally the components of nervous system so the role of nervous system in our body is to control and coordinate various activity i hope it is clear thank you